Stop using perplexity if you want sources from your AI. The best thing you can be using right now is consensus. And consensus has at the moment some awesome updates that you need to know about. Now, if we log in, we can see that we've got a new interface. We've got a sort of like the similar thing to last time, but we've got a few new buttons that you should know about. The first thing is down here, this has been replaced with this little thing and it's got these options. In the drop down menu, you've got quick, you've got pro and deep, which is in the beta phase, but I'm very impressed with what I see. And also you've got these little tablets down here, or these little, what do you call them, tabs, buttons, whatever you want to call them, it's fine. Um, you've got here, ask a research question, which is what we're typically used to seeing with consensus. We've got draft and outline, we've got create a table and try the consensus meter. So many awesome new things. And the first thing you need to know about, I think is this deep research feature. So the first thing we wanna do if we wanna look at deep research is go down here and select Deep. Now, this is a comprehensive search literature review of 50 papers. So let's ask a research question such as, can content analysis be used effectively in sociology research? I don't know, that's why I'm doing deep research on it. Then we make sure it's on deep and then we can filter it, but I recommend you filter after you get the results because you could accidentally kind of exclude things that you do want included in this deep research. Anyway, and then we click go, bonk, and we can see it do its magic. So so if we click up here, you can see that we get this deep research and it will identify references. It will screen them. It will look at who's eligible or which references are eligible. And then it will look at the included ones to create an actual kind of like report from it. So this does take a little bit of time, but I love that you can see the progress as it's going. Here you can see that it's kind of like zooming in on sociology and then it's looking for rephrase of the terminology. Then it's identifying contrasting perspectives. So it's doing all the things that would have taken you hours and hours to do in the past is done for you. But we don't need to wait for that to finish because I've done it for you beforehand. I've asked the research question, can excessive sodium consumption lead to hypertension? I don't know, that's why I'm doing the deep research. So here, if we can see here, it's got deep, then we've got 19 searches and it found 50 sources, but it's much better than that because if you click over here, you get this little sidebar and it says deep search. There were 947 papers identified then they were screened, then these ones were eligible and then actually included 50 for this report. So you can see it goes through a lot of the searching process that you would have to do manually and uh, this is the output. So you still get the consensus meter which is here and you can see that yes, 96% of papers say yes, possibly mixed and no. So this is 0% no which means that yes, this um, research question is answered in the affirmative um, and you can see that at 96. If it was like yes and some mixed and possibly, but you can see sodium, be careful with your sodium guys, I've done the research for you. Okay, and then here the deep research um, output here, you've got the research question, you've got the introduction and the one thing I love about this is each of the references is shown but they're color coded so that that's like yes, that agrees with it or this is unknown and this one is yes. So overall, you get a really nice snapshot of the research visually just by looking at the colors of the references that it provides. Then it's got a quick outline of the methods. Then it's got the key papers that you should know about. Then it's got the top contributors, which I know that I think is like probably not something you would need in deep research, but it's nice they put it there. And then we've got discussion. Um, everything here is reference. And look, this one is a mixed. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So I should look at that because in this bit, it's loads a green, an unknown, and a mix. So that tells me that this statement maybe is a little bit more uncertain than the other things that have been referenced. Then we've got claims and evidence table. Then we've got research gaps. It's never been easy to find research gaps with a tool like consensus because it literally just gives it to you. So here you can say we get the research gaps matrix um, and you get that uh, topic outcome. So you get all of the sort of like different topics and you get where they were kind of um, measured. So this one has got zero here in adolescents and older children. This means that longer term random control trials on CVD events 
is just unknown in the literature. That gives you an idea that this could be a place where you could sort of like put in your own research idea and get it published because there is a gap. Absolutely love that. Then we get open research questions um, and then it goes to what we typically expect from consensus. So we get all of the results down here, all of the different papers with all of the information at a glance that we need. So very rigorous, rigorous journal, highly cited. Then you can click out to the papers and you can save all of the papers by downloading, exporting them to an art is a dot ris file for your zotero and ah that is a lot of information in a single search and it was done relatively quickly it hasn't been easier to find the results from a research question directly related to papers that have been published in the peer-reviewed literature and you can be assured that it's not going to hallucinate because this tool is made to extract information directly from the research that's published. Yes, 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 and it gets even better. Check out these things. So let's have a look at another awesome feature that Consensus has. So if we head over here and look for a normal research question and tick pro or quick, then we get the normal results that we expect from Consensus. We get the Consensus meter, we get all of the references, we get all of the um, all of the papers that we need to look at. But if we go down here, you can see it's this little tab here, this little thing here, which we can either click on or we can push the the slash button on our computer keyboard, nonetheless. And then we can ask a follow up question. And we've even got quick, pro and deep. So if you find something in here and you want to ask a follow up question, you can use this sort of like bar down here. And this is where now consensus has turned into a little bit more of a collaborator where you can start, you get your report and then you can say, you know what, go deeper on this thing or give me more information about this. Or if you've got another research question that pops into your mind, you can then ask it because it's going to use this information and kind of like build on that. I absolutely love the fact that it's much more conversational than it was in the past. It still has all of the power that uh, you had from before, but now you've got the ability to kind of interact with the results much, much more effectively. Thanks, Consensus. Love that. And there's other things you should know about. What about these little buttons underneath the search bar? So there's a few extra ones. Draft an outline. Let's click that. Draft an outline for a blog on the pros and cons of the carbon tax. All right, I like that. Then it will go away and actually create an outline. So now not only are we generating kind of like the consensus about a research topic, but if you are writing blogs for your research group, blogs for your own sort of personal blog for science communication, you can now get an outline with the supporting references and create that awesome blog of your dreams that you've always wanted to create. So here you can see we got the blog outline and it's all referenced with the appropriate stuff in the right places. And it's never been easier to produce a blog or any sort of like outline for a chapter, for a thesis, for anything like that. Go to draft an outline. You can see an outline for a grant proposal on methane eating microbes. So if you need sort of like to get over the activation energy and the scary sort of like nature of a blank page, you can come here and get an outline and receive all of the references at the same time. Yes, love it. Oh, let's go here. Let's just click it and see what happens. You can see that you get all of the most powerful information straight on a single page. You can see that it gets 10 sources and we get a grant proposal outline, background and rationale, objectives, research plan. Um, and this is a great starting point for any research Research project because it is just laid out for you. Then you can use your proper science brain with all that knowledge you've built up over the years of doing your research to actually make it better. But going zero to something has never ever been easier. And I love that you've got all the references to support the different sections that you're going to talk about. Oh, easy peasy. I missed the table then with my elbow, but stay cool. Stay cool. Yeah. So the last little things you need to know about firstly is the table function. Once again, you can create a table comparing different things, create a table comparing 5G frequency bands. Yeah, why not? So click there. So if there's anything that you feel like would be better presented to you in a table format, you can now do it. You want a comparison table, you want to just list of important things table, it can now do tables for you absolutely love that. And then you can take that table and delve a little bit deeper with further follow up questions or 
you can just go a snapshot of all of the important bits of information that you've asked about. Love that. And then we love the consensus meter. You ask any sort of question. This has been around for a long time, but it's what makes consensus stand out. The consensus meter allows you to get a snapshot of the research. Does it support it? Is it mixed? Does it maybe support it? Or is it a flat out no? So you can see that all of the results here are color coded and you can go in a little bit deeper here and say, you know what, I'm gonna filter these and say, no, I don't want the no's, I don't want the mix and I don't want the possibilities. Oh, this was 100% yes anyway, but you can go in and you can filter it much, much easier than you did before. And we can also filter down the side with all of the awesome stuff that we've seen before and expect from consensus. You've got the filters like the published year, the journal rank, so make sure that you're only sort of looking at the tip, toppity, tippity, top, top, tip, Tippity top, tippity top, top, top best journals, and you want the Q1s, absolutely. Um, and then we've got citations, at least whatever. Exclude preprints, pre, blah, 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 exclude preprints, that's what it is, and much, much more. It is so easy now to get proper research and an idea of what that research is telling you. Leave perplexity alone. Head straight to consensus. Love it. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about all of the best deep AI research tools that you should know about and they're ranked as well, even better. Go check it out.